Ladies and gentlemen, we have the winners for Best Documentary Feature, Icarus, Brian Fogel, and Dan Kogan. I will start with 148 and then 272 down here. 148, 272. Wow. Hi, um, Sanaya Kelly from the LA Times. Um, so how Can important is hand? Netflix? Sorry. Can you stand up, please, um. <laughs> so they know who's speaking? Uh, hi, you. LA Times. Hey. So um, how important is Netflix to documentary features, and what's the future for Russia under Putin? Net Netflix has uh, single-handedly changed the documentary world. They've given voice to documentary in a way that no company or distributor has ever done before. They're in 120 countries, or 190 countries, 120 million homes, and it was a, a no-brainer decision for us to go with Netflix because the love and support that they were able to give this film that was of true importance to Dan and I and to Gregory and that the world see it. And Netflix, um, I think, has done an extraordinary job and honored that this is their film. Yeah, I want to I wanna add that um, Lisa Nishimura, the head of documentary there, has single-handedly changed the documentary landscape around the world and made it so that people want to watch these films at home everywhere. It's an extraordinary opportunity for filmmakers that we never would have had before them. At the touch of a button now, you're in 190 million homes. There's nothing like it. And it's a huge honor for us to win the first Oscar for a feature-length film for Netflix. We consider that a piece of history, and we're deeply honored. We're going to come down front to 272 and then back to 147. Uh, hello. Galina uh, Galkina uh, from Russia. My question is, how... Did you manage to make this film so quickly? And was... <laughs> it took four, four years. years. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand my love. And was it difficult to obtain truthful information? Well, um, you know, it, it's not difficult to obtain truthful information when the person that you're speaking to is telling the truth. And what we've seen is that all of his evidence that he brought forward has been corroborated, has been forensically proven, has been proven by DNA, salt analysis, et cetera. So it is irrelevant what Russia would like to say in regards to Dr. Rachenkov or what Russia would like to say in regards to the truth. The truth is the truth is the truth. And then there's fake news, and then there's false news, and then there's the truth. And Dr. Rachenkov told the truth. So when you have a truth teller and a whistleblower, it's not hard to prove the truth when they're telling the truth. I'd like to add that every single thing that Gregory Rachenkov told us was true. And we know that because it was proven, as Brian said, chemically, forensically, and there is no denying it no matter how much you want to say about it. We're going over to 147, and unfortunately, I've been told they do have to go back, so we'll wrap it up with 28. Hi, over to your left. Cara Buckley here with the New York Times. Congratulations on your win. Thank you, Cara. You hi, know, Cara. Hi. Do you know um, what the status of the threat is that Gregory is under now? I understand he's still, as far as you know, in federal witness protection program. And is there any sense of how long he will be under threat and how intense the threat is? Well, this is truly for Gregory's lawyer, Jim Walden, to talk about. But from what we know, which is secondhand information, the threat is very well, real. Uh, there is uh, a hunt going on for him, at least is what we've been told. And more importantly, Russia has formally asked for his extradition. Um, and in Russia, he has been made out to be a liar uh, and somebody who is deceitful. And the Russian media has not honestly reported on this story uh, while they continue to blame this entire scandal on one individual while not taking a single shred of responsibility for this scandal and then being accepted back into the Olympics, which in and of itself is a scandal and a scam. So as to Gregory's safety, um, it is a precarious situation, and we're hopeful that our government will continue to protect him. And as to his future, it is one that is in doubt, because what we're seeing is, is that telling the truth doesn't necessarily set you free. And in regards to telling the truth against Russia and your own country, not only does it not set you free, it makes you a wanted and hunted man, and that is tragic.
It's important to add that the former head of the Russian Olympic Committee said publicly months ago that Gregory should be shot as he would have been in Stalin's time. And I haven't heard him take that back or say that he regrets that. And I haven't heard anyone in the Russian government say that that's not what they should be doing. So I think we all have to take the threats to him extremely, extremely seriously. And we'll wrap it up to your right with number 28. Hi there, this is Steve Futterman from CBS News. I wanted to know what was going through your mind when you saw, I'm assuming you watched some of the Olympics, when you saw the Olympic athletes from Russia compete, and in one case, the hockey team, which represented an entire team as opposed to individuals, uh, won the gold medal. Did you think that was right? And uh, uh, what do you think the Russian government is thinking of the IOC's lack of action? Let me say one thing. Um, Brian and I have both been to Russia. Brian spent a lot of time with Gregory in Russia, and he loves the Russian people. The goal of this movie was never to go after Russia. In fact, as you see from the movie, we were working with Dr. Rodchenkov because Brian wanted to, to dope himself and test the system internationally. It just happened that Russia came up in the course of doing that because of the revelations about Gregory. So. We want clean athletes to compete. If there are clean Russian athletes competing, we're thrilled from them. However, what the IOC has done by banning Russia, supposedly, but then allowing so many athletes to compete, has really been a fraud. And I know that Brian would like to say more about that. Well, I mean, plain and simple, Thomas Bach needs to resign. Um, he is a crook. And what he has shown to planet Earth and any athlete who believes in the Olympic ideal is to not trust it and to not trust those words. Because if you can corroborate and prove and substantiate a fraud on this caliber, on this level, that spanned for decades, and then essentially give that country that committed that fraud a slap in the wrist, allow 160 of their athletes to compete in those games, two of them found doping, and then immediately after the games are over, without that country ever accepting responsibility, apologizing for any of their actions, or accepting that any of this was truth while they continue to hunt Dr. Gregory Rachenkov and they lift the ban on that country, what a fraud, what a corrupt organization, and that man should be embarrassed and ashamed of himself. He needs to resign. We have to wrap it up, unfortunately, but congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.